the historian's art is to be able to take all of these nine billion records that the National Archives holds in trust and to show the human emotion, the fears, the doubts, the ambitions, and making it all relevant to us today and teaching us. The history of the Civil War, for example, is still an important subject for us today. Not only do you have to basically read anything that has ever been written on your subject, but then you have to walk into a place like the National Archives and say, I'm going to read these primary documents as if one of them may overturn everything, and sometimes it does. The National Archives is just full of stories saying, find me, tell me. And it's one of the wonderful things that James McPherson has done dives into those original documents. And he's going to find out what the people at the time thought and felt and wrote and believed. And then he's going to take that hundreds of those, thousands of those, and put them all together and step back from it and say, what does all that mean? What does it explain to us? Amazingly enough to people these days, it was not so long ago that a lot of Americans and a lot of American scholars were not that interested in the Civil War. Then comes James McPherson, who through his writings has attracted both scholars and a huge American readership to understand how important the Civil War really was to our experience. Jim is also a great teacher, and those two blend together perfectly in Jim McPherson because he is an historian who explains the past to the present and perhaps even to the future, but certainly has taught all of his students for the 42 years that he's worked at Princeton and for all of those of the rest of us who work in the Civil War community. He has been a teacher to us as well. He's extremely knowledgeable. He's a very personable man and an excellent writer in that he's very readable. He is very popular with the general public, of which I am a member reading the battle cry of freedom. The story was vibrant. The story was incredibly well told. The story fit together. And all of a sudden, I was at the end. And I didn't want to get to the end. There are few scholars who feel the intensity of connection with the generation of the American Civil War that Jim does. And one of the ways he makes that happen is that he visits the places where events took place. This place, Antietam. Like documents, battlefields are an artifact of the Civil War, and we're losing them at the rate of 30 acres every day. One way of letting the public know how important those battlefields are is to encourage them to learn about the Civil War, and one of the tools that we suggest they use is Battle Cry of Freedom. Jim is very serious about battlefield preservation. I think he's serious about it because he believes that if you can walk the ground where events took place, those events come closer to the current generation. And if we lose that, it's lost forever. Crossroads of Freedom has always given me a, a much greater understanding of how Antietam fits into the larger context of the war. And that's what's so valuable is putting it in context. Instead of just looking at an individual brigade and where they marched, you know, how did that fit into the picture of the nation as a whole? McPherson's work can inspire you to want to understand what happened on, on that really dreadful day when there were so many casualties that it was the bloodiest day in American history. The works of Professor McPherson really helped the place come alive and, and enable me to give people a, a better understanding of the, of the feelings and, and reasons why these men fought here and, and lined up shoulder to shoulder. Those words give the battlefield a life. We have someone like Jim McPherson who comes along and he takes this entire canvas. He basically creates important, enormous volumes on the Civil War era in which he deals with political history, deals with the history of slavery, the history of the freedmen, he deals with social and economic conflicts. He does it all with a degree of grace and a very impressive, eloquent literary style that uh, makes him a very unique historian. The whole idea 
in our giving the award is to give it to someone who has used the holdings of the National Archives to bring American history to a much larger group of Americans. You have to give the people that are speaking in these documents a voice. And that's one of the wonderful things that James McPherson has brought to us as a country and to us as, as individuals. Jim, I'd like to say that I'm how proud I am to be part of this celebration and how proud I am of you and all that you've accomplished. Congratulations.